What is up YouTube, IDM here, and welcome back to another jailbreak status video. I'm gonna mainly focus on iOS 15 in this video, so I'm not gonna talk about all of the current iOS 14 jailbreaks. Uh, I did do that in the previous episode, so if you guys are curious about what are all the current jailbreaks out right now, uh, just check out the link in the description. I'll keep it at the top of the description there for you guys to check it out. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'm gonna focus on iOS 15 in this video because while working on my website, I noticed a trend for jailbreaks from year to year. And I wanted to talk to you guys about it because it can kind of help you plan, um, you know, for jailbreaking your iOS device. At least I think it's, you know, definitely a strong signal. And uh, I do want to talk about that. Like I said, I'll get to that later in the video. So first off, we're going to hop into Twitter here and we're going to talk about a new tweet here uh, that has been mentioned a couple of times. And that is a vulnerability which is a zero day for iOS 15. And this is working on uh, apparently all the latest versions of iOS 15. So that would be 15.1. And I would assume it is still in 15.2 beta as well. So that's really good news. Now there's some more follow-up tweets here by this person. And this is a trusted, um, this is a trusted source on Twitter as well. Uh, no plan for release at the moment. Still analyzing this to see if it's a real vulnerability once finished. If it's worth it, we'll start a responsible disclosure process. Now, I think what most of these security researchers do is they sell these vulnerabilities uh, to you know security research companies, um, or they disclose it to Apple or something like that. Usually. Uh, they get paid for these vulnerabilities. They typically have no incentives to release it to the jailbreak community because in reality, all they're really going to get out of that is yes, they'll probably get like, you know, 10,000, 20,000 Twitter followers um, out of it, but that's about it. And then they're going to have a bunch of people asking them uh, when the next jailbreak is going to come out. Uh, so that's their, you know, f first option do that. So release it to the jailbreak community, get followers, get lots of questions or option two, sell it for a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars to a research company and walk away clean. Now I'll ask you, what would you do? Would you, would you use this to get 10 to 20,000 Twitter followers? Or would you use this to get $300,000 and go and buy, I don't know, a new Corvette and put a down payment on a house? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think, at least for me, I don't know, if I had that vulnerability, I would probably do the same. I would probably sell it. But just because it's being sold uh, does not mean that the jailbreak community will never get it. Uh, chances are we can get it. Typically, what happens is once it's patched by Apple, uh, they follow their disclosure, you know, their responsible disclosure process. Um, they then can release it because the affected versions of iOS are usually at that point no longer signed. So the only way you can get to that version is if you stayed on it and didn't update because there's gonna be uh, no downgrading possible being that that version of iOS isn't signed. So at that point they can make a write up and then you know someone in the jailbreak community that develops jailbreaks might get their hands on it and then they might be able to construct you know an exploit out of the vulnerability and the exploit could be used in a jailbreak. Just wanted to mention that, but to root back to the beginning of the video of talking about iOS 15, uh, this is still exciting because it's just showing that there is still vulnerabilities that can be used for jailbreaking. Now, um, let me go ahead and pull up some other tweets here real quick by Pattern F. Um, I talked about this in the previous video. So this is, this is basically a jailbreak demo of iOS 14.6 that works up to 15.0.2, including 15.1 beta three. I think the 15.1 beta three is important. Um, so just take note on that. And then also uh, there is another tweet here by another trusted source, which is by Bright Eye Up, showing that they have kernel read and write on iOS 15.1. And if you look at the build, this is the official iOS 15.1 release build. So the RC, basically the, the public version of 15.1. Uh, so now I don't know um, if, if this is the same, uh, you know, vulnerability or exploit or whatever, whatever it might be. 
uh, as the other one, but it's just showing that there is still a lot of activity going on with iOS 15 right away out of the gate. Now, I'm going to talk about some predictions and what I think real quick, uh, because year to year, uh, they tend to kind of repeat themselves, at least they have for the last couple of years. So I think that CheckRain will receive the first update for iOS 15 support, and then we will see that released. Um, I'm assuming there must be some pretty big hurdles to jump over to get this updated for iOS 15 because we're still waiting for it. Uh, and CheckRain is usually pretty quick to be updated to support uh, the newest version. Um, but we still don't see that or haven't seen that yet. So still waiting. And I would absolutely love to be able to update this iPhone 10 and jailbreak it on iOS 15. Now, once we see CheckRain come out, that's typically um, when we will see the other jailbreaks, you know, released. Uh, for the newer iPhones and newer iPads, uh, usually sometime after that. There's really no way of predicting the exact dates or anything like that, but that's usually what happens. CheckRain's updated, and then the newer devices and the, you know, the jailbreaks that support those comes after. So now we're going to talk about something I noticed while I was working on my website uh, on the iPhone jailbreak wiki. Uh, now, this is a super boring sp spreadsheet so I don't want to spend too much time here but it's just a trend that I noticed and I have a lot of people asking me you know what version of iOS is the best version to be on uh, and I always have to recommend the lowest version is the best version you can be on stop updating your iPhone end of story the lower the better the older the version the better the chances of a jailbreak um, so that is still true so I don't want this information to hinder that rule of thumb but this is something that i noticed that i thought was pretty damn awesome so if if we go through this spreadsheet here basically on the left uh, on the left it lists uh, all of the different jailbreak uh tools um in the past as you can see we're all, all the way back to february 4th 2013. we got you know evasion evasion 7 pangu uh so on and so forth now if we swipe over here it does show uh, the versions that that jailbreak supports. So the lowest version that it supports and then the highest version that jailbreak tool in specific supports. And I noticed a pretty, um, a pretty normal trend from year to year. And that is that usually X.0 and X.1 almost always receive a jailbreak every single year. Now, sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes it's like, you know, x.0 to x.4 or like ios 14 14.0 to 14.3 uh, but just remember that your your x.0 or your x.0 and your x.1 are in between that so it's still included and if, if you go through here you will notice that that 0.1 and that 0 0.0 are almost always jailbroken every single year 8.0 to 8.4 9.0 to 9.1 11.0 to 11.1 and then later on uh, this came after the fact obviously um, 9.2 to 9.3.3 but then here we have 10.0.1 to 10.1 um, 10.0.1 to 10.2 10.0 to 10.3.4 10.0 to 10.3.3 so in this mix almost every single jailbreak supports 0.0 to 0.1 and that loops me back to the information that we're getting here on Twitter of all of these exploits and or vulnerabilities that we're seeing available for 15.0 up to 15.1. So if history repeats itself, I would say that's probably a pretty good version to be on if you want to receive a jailbreak. And if you need to plan for a jailbreak, let's say you get the newest iPhone and you want to jailbreak that iPhone. As soon as you get that iPhone, Stop updating it because chances are that 0.0 to 0.1 is going to get a jailbreak. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. Like I said, I still recommend to stay on the lowest version possible. Do not update. It is always best to stay low. The lower, the better. The older, the better the chances of a jailbreak. This has been IDM and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.